Bulldog, out of the night, and into his American adventure comes Bulldog Drummond. About our newest adventure, here is Bulldog Drummond. Before I begin, in spite of our final victory, we still have a serious food problem. The demands on our food supply are very great and will continue so for many months to come. And our farmers face the most serious farm labor shortage since the beginning of the war. So let's help out. Everybody can help. Men and women, boys and girls, with or without experience. Four million volunteer crop corps workers are needed to help in harvesting the 1945 crops. You are needed no matter where you live or how little time you can spare, and you'll be paid prevailing farm wages. So get in touch with your county agricultural agent or your local farm employment office. You went all out in wartime. Let's go all out for peace. <laughs> I call this story, Murder in the Death House. It began one evening in early spring when I received a telephone call from Inspector Paul Matthews of the city police. Captain Gummins, guys, please. Uh, let me speak to him, Danny. This is Inspector Matthews. Yeah, well, yes, sir. Just a moment, please. Yeah, it's for you, sir. Inspector Matthews. Oh, thank you, Danny. Well, Inspector, how's the homicide bureau? Hello, Drummond. I think I've got a lead on the George Green killing. Oh? Have you found some new evidence? Possibly, but I'm not sure yet. Monty Blair was in the death house awaiting execution. Is asked to see me. He says he'll tell who killed Green. It's a bit late for Blair to be asking clemency. I don't know whether he's stalling or not. But I want you to come with me, Drummond. You helped convict Blair, and I think you ought to be in on his confession. Very well. I'll be there. Okay, Drummond. Goodbye, Inspector. I seem to recall this George Green person, sir. Wasn't he the thug who was murdered in that black market gang war about a year ago? Yes, Denny. You've got your finger on the top of course. But uh, it strikes me as strange that Monty Blair waited this long to tell the police. Perhaps he thought he would be reprieved without being forced to betray his secret. Mm, possibly. Oh, we'd better hurry, sir. Blair might change his mind. I hardly think so, Denny. A condemned man in the death house is in no position to bargain for his life. <laughs> The death house begins directly down that guard door, Drummond. Oh? Uh, where's the guard station, Inspector? There's one on the other side of the gate. That's a rather peculiar arrangement. Why? Well, the guard has no direct view into the cell block. Oh, there's no need one. The cell door system is operated electrically. Over the gate, guard. Okay, Inspector. Thanks. Right ahead, Drummond. Uh, which is Monty Blair's cell, Inspector? The last one on the right. Yeah, this must be the slack season for murder, sir. All the cells are unoccupied. Here we are. Why, he's asleep, sir. There, wake up. Wake up. Open up, Dad. Dad, open the door from his control panel. Oh, I see. There, wake up. I'll get him up. Come here, you. No, no, wait, wait, Inspector. What is it? Look at him from this side. Good heavens, sir. There's a knife in his chest. Yes, some self-appointed executioner got here before us. Monty Blair has been murdered. Look at this note, Drummond. I just found it in his pocket. This proves it's a suicide. Mm -hmm. I've changed my mind about ratting on the guy who killed George Green. I've decided to become a good citizen and save the state the expense of killing me. Monty Blair. I guess that dismisses the murder charge, eh? Mm, I'm afraid I must disagree, Inspector Matthews. 
The evidence in this cell is quite to the contrary. Why, the note itself shows that there's a forgery, sir. Precisely, Denny. It's printed, not written, with a heavy red crayon. What does that prove? We've just searched this cell, Inspector. Did you find a red crayon? Well, no. Furthermore, it doesn't make sense that Blair would send for you in the hope of having his death sentence commuted and then commit suicide. No, Inspector Matthews, Blair was murdered. Does it mean he killed George Green? Yes, Denny. Now, there's an inviting case for you, Inspector. You'll solve two murders by arresting one man. And all I have to do is to find him. Who were the principal suspects in the Green case? Dr. Stebbins and Nick Marino. Stebbins was the boss of the mob Green belonged to, and Marino was a rival racketeer. How was Green killed? He was stabbed. He found his body on a dead road about ten miles from here. Hmm, that's interesting. Both men were killed by the same type of weapon. Drummond, conceding that Blair was murdered, I don't think you'll have to bother with the case. My department can handle it. Oh, but Inspector, this case is too intriguing for me to leave. It has all the elements of an absorbing adventure. Well, it's not necessary, really. We're quite capable of handling the whole affair. I've no doubt of that, Inspector Matthews, but we won't get in your way. We'll conduct an entirely independent investigation. Uh, all right. Thank you, Inspector. Come along, Denny. We've got two social calls to make. Rocky Stebbins and Nick Marino. Perhaps we can supply the death house with a replacement for Monty Blair. <laughs> Inspector Matthews' attitude strikes me as being a trifle hard for a detective, sir. What do you mean, Denny? He appeared quite reluctant in permitting us to assist in the investigation. Uh, yes, just I noticed that. No, it's difficult enough to keep one's eye on the criminal, sir, without also having to watch the detectives. Let's not worry about that at the moment, Denny. I want you to look at Nick Marino at the Royal Cafe on First Street. I understand he owns the place. In the meantime, I'll pay a visit to Rocky Stebbins. You can phone me there. Disturb you, Rocky. May I come in? It all depends. Who are you? Captain Hugh Drummond. Oh, yeah, I've heard of you. Go on in. Make yourself at home. Well, going on a trip, Rocky? No, I just got back. As a matter of fact, my plane landed at the airport about half an hour ago. Oh, really? Well, I'll be leaving then, Rocky. Now, wait a minute, gentlemen. What's the gag? It's quite simple, Rocky. Someone murdered Monty Blair in his cell about half an hour ago. You and Nick Marino are the principal suspects. But your alibi and, uh, of course, the plane passenger list lets you out. <laughs> I guess that puts old Nick behind the eight ball. Oh. Hello. Hello, is Captain Drummond there, please? Yeah, sure, just a minute. It's for you. Thank you. Hello? Uh, sir, I've just left the Royal Cafe. Nick Marino wasn't there. We've got to find him, Denny. I think he may be our man. Oh, I know where he is, sir. Good work. What's the address? The city prison, sir. He's been there for two weeks. Back to our story in just a moment. Bulldog Drummond. Monty Blair, a convicted murderer, awaiting execution in the penitentiary, is found stabbed to death in his cell. Blair had wanted to give Drummond and Police Inspector Matthews information about the unsolved murder of George Green. After Matthews reluctantly permits Drummond and Denny to investigate the murder, they discover that both of the suspects have ironclad alibis. We find Drummond in the apartment of Rocky Stebbins, one of the suspects. What's the matter, Drummond? Bad news? Uh, yes, yes, Rocky, for both of us. Your alibi requires a little checking. It appears that Nick Marino has a better one than yours. Oh, yeah? What's his angle? He's been in the prison for the past two weeks. <laughs> Perfect place for that crook. I'm surprised the cops got anything on him. Rather fortunate for Marino to have such an excellent alibi, Rocky. Oh, I don't know, Drummond. Men have gotten out of jail cells before. Hmm, that's an interesting observation. First-hand experience, I presume. Yeah, sure. I'm wanted in all the 48 states. Sorry, pal, I don't think I can be of any help. 
take a tip and pay a visit to my competitor in this new boarding house. Very well, Rocky. I'll work on the case alphabetically. Marino's ahead of you in that respect. Uh, don't bother coming back, Drummond. I won't be allowed. Oh, no trouble at all, Rocky. I'll make myself right at home. Let's, uh, let's hope it'll be just a social call. <laughs> This is Marino cell, Captain Drummond. Thank you, Keeper. I'll be at the gate when you're ready to leave. Oh, hey, yeah. Uh, I'm Captain Drummond. This is Denny. What do you want? My life story? No, oh, we're not newspaper men, Mr. Marino. Oh, no, yeah, you got a good rap. Thank you, Nick. Yeah, that's what worries me. We'd like to talk to you about a friend of yours. The name Marty Blair, I know all about it. Nikes was here about ten minutes ago. I don't imagine you signed a confession. Yeah. Is that what you call a psychological grilling? Nick? I understand that George Green worked for Rocky Stebbins. Yeah. Two rats in the same pack. Business competitors of yours, no doubt? In a way. Blair was killed, Nick, because he was going to tell Inspector Matthews and myself who murdered Green. Very smart of the guy and act him off. Not exactly. Because he's given the police a new set of clues on which to work. They'd about given up on the Green case, but now they've been handed a fresh start. Now, Matthews won't work too hard on it. What do you mean? You'll figure it, pal. Why should he try to find the obliging gent that took care of the guy who was married to his first wife? The guy kept on bothering him. Let me get even with him. Are you sure of your facts? Naturally. I don't agree with him either. He was calling us up Joyce Williams then. No, so Inspector Matthews is the man that we call All right, Denny, not now. So put a flat on the table, Drummond. I ain't especially worried. Tell me, Nick, were you in your cell at 6 o'clock this evening? Where yeah, else? We eat at 5 and we can't up again at 5.30. How far is this cell block from the death house? To the next car. Come on, on your way. I'm through with that quiz game. I'm your living the hard way. Well, thanks for everything, Nick. You've been most helpful. Then you're positive that Marino was in his cell at 6 o'clock? Definitely, Captain Drummond. I was the guard on duty at that time. If the cell door had been opened, the light would have flashed on my control panel. Now, just how does that panel work? All the cell doors are closed simultaneously by this electrical control system. As the prisoners step into their cells, I press this switch here and the doors close. And if any door remains open? A light flashes immediately on the control board opposite the cell number. As long as all the lights are off, we know that the cells are locked. We check the system each day. It's never failed. Where's the circuit located in the cell door? There are two outlets in each door, at the top and at the bottom. When the door slides against the wall, the circuit is complete. Quite an efficient system, sir, isn't it? As long as the control panel is kept under proper maintenance, Denny. Marino's door is closed at six o'clock, Captain Drummond. I can guarantee that. Tell me, how's his behavior record? Well, no, he's been a model prisoner ever since he came here. <laughs> For a burglary sentence, we expected more trouble. What prison detail has he been assigned to? But, you know, uh... He was in the electrical shop for a while, but he's in the laundry now. I see. Well, that about covers all we can do here, Denny. The next guard is due on in about half an hour, Captain. If you'd like to come back later. Uh, thank you very much. We may have to return for another debate with our friend Nick. Now, Denny, let's ask Inspector Matthews if he's beaten us to the murderer. <laughs> Do you really want to see the inspector, sir? Yes, Denny. Marino's information about Matthew's wife being married to Green may prove an important clue. It's just as I told you, sir. In the meantime, I want you to check the airport to see if Rocky Stebbins really was on that flight, as he claimed. But I, I, I wanted to be with you when Inspector Matthews confessed, sir. Don't simplify the solution, Denny. Now, look here. It's necessary that you go to the airport. I'll meet you outside Stebbins' apartment house in one hour. Now, hurry. Uh, but, sir, yeah. I... Uh, yes, sir. Immediately, sir. Prison guard phoned me to say you've been questioning Marino any luck? Not as much as I'd hoped, Inspector. That's a tough case, all right. Take my advice, Carmen. Forget about it. Let the police force handle it. Oh, but Inspector, the case gets more interesting each hour. I'm convinced it isn't Stevens and Marino. Their alibis are too good. Must have been an inside job with one of the guards being bribed. Possibly. But that doesn't rule out either of these two unworthy gentlemen as being on the paying off end of the bribery transaction. Drummond, stop, Cassie. It's not logical. 
I understand you have a deep personal interest in this case, Inspector. What do you mean, Drummond? I'm told that George Green was a former sweetheart of your wife's. Who told you that? Don't be upset, Inspector. It's a matter of record down at City Hall. And let the record stay there. It's got no connection with this case. Purely a coincidence. All the same, Inspector. It would make an ugly story in the newspapers. Some unfeeling reporter might even insinuate that the reason the Green murderer was never found was because... I've had enough of this, Drummond. Get out, and don't come back here. I'm warning you to drop this case. You try to visit Marina when that jail again. I'll see to it that you stay there. <laughs> Ah, Denny, what did you find out? Uh, Rocky was on that plane, all right. His name was on the passenger list. Did you get a description of him? Well, no, sir. Just the fact that he was on the flight. Mm, that still isn't conclusive proof, Denny. He may have been an imposter. All right, let's go in. Perhaps Mr. Stebbins is longing for companionship. Uh, shall we walk up, sir? Oh, no, no, Denny. The elevator is much more convenient. Oh, it's the self starting kind, sir. Third floor, Denny. About your theory on Inspector Matthews, you may conceivably have something, Denny. Our audience together was quite a stormy one. Can't we have him arrested? I don't know. That's the apartment over there. Oh. Well, shall I knock, sir? Uh, it won't be necessary. The door's not locked. It's quite dark in here, sir. There's a light switch on the rear wall. <coughs> oh, my word, sir. The light, Denny, the light. Uh, it's an improvement, sir. Now I can search the apartment much more accurately. The first row of the shades. The light can be seen from the street. Then you can begin going through that desk in the corner. Marino said Stebbins was an active blackmailer. Perhaps we can find some interesting correspondence. Now, let's see. This table might be worthy of a glance, too. There's nothing over here, sir. Never mind, Denny. Never mind. I think we have it. Yes, what is it, sir? Look at these letters. They're all addressed to George Green, and they're signed Joyce. Well, that's the first name of Inspector Matthews' wife. Well, you told us that, sir. I believe the full name was Joyce Williams. Yes, that's right, Denny. These love letters, which I won't read in their entirety, are being used by Stebbins to blackmail Matthews. At what price, sir? I'm glad you're not going to find out, gents. Good evening, Rocky. We were hoping you'd decide to drop in. A good thing I didn't like that movie, gentlemen. All right, give me those letters. I'm afraid I can't do that, Rocky. I don't count very good, pal. Better hand them over. Too late. Hey, you turned them out. Jenny, someone tore the letters from my hand. Locked it off. Uh, too late, sir. He's gotten out. Get those lights back on. Uh, there we are, sir. Oh, my word. Look, Mr. Stebbins appears to have been shot. Yes, yes, Denny. But fortunately for him, he missed becoming a corpse by a fraction of an inch. This bullet grazed his skull. Oh, my head. Yes, he's still there, Rocky. You are quite lucky. Now, who used you as a target? And incidentally, he took away your letters. You figure it out. There's only one logical answer. Better hump over to that jail again, Drummond. You'll find your playmate there. Thanks, Rocky. Perhaps we won't have to meet again. Good night, and thank you for your hospitality. Have you decided who the murderer is yet, sir? No, no, Denny. The race is still wide open. Inspector Matthews, Stebbins, Marino, running neck and neck. Marino presumably is in jail, and Stebbins was just shot at by Matthews in order to get back those letters from his wife to George Green. Then he must have uh, killed Marty Blair, sir. No, Denny, I'm not certain of that. The two crimes may be unrelated. But I want to see Nick Marino. Some strange way, I have a feeling he holds the key to this puzzle. Perhaps we can induce him to lend lease it. Dirty cell, sir. Yes. Fortunately, Inspector Matthews neglected to leave word at the gate that we weren't to be admitted. And they've opened his door for us, sir. Control panel still working. Well, who has? Drummond and Denny. Got your murderer yet? No, Nick. We thought you'd like to help us out. Have you a piece of red crayon by any chance? I'm sorry, pal, but I threw away my paint set a couple of years ago. Look, it's pretty late. Come on, get home and let me sleep. Let me look at this bed for a moment, will you? Get right in there. Well, well. This is a dangerous sleeping arrangement, Nick. 
The front two legs come off quite easily. What's it to you? It's my skin, not yours. A most unfortunate arrangement for you, Nick. For now I know how you got out of this cell to murder Monty Blair. Back to the climax of our story in just a moment. And now, back to Bulldog Drummond. We left Drummond and Denny in the cell of Nick Marino at the city prison. Drummond has just accused Marino of murdering Monty Blair. Tell me you're having a pipe dream. And all you have to do now is prove it. Very well. Watch carefully. I'm placing one of these steel legs down here between the wall and the edge of the door. And the other one in a similar position at the top of the door. Now, what do you suppose would happen when the guard threw the switch closing the doors? Oh, I see, sir. The cell door wouldn't close, but a second would still be maintained. Precisely, Denny. Having worked in the prison electrical shop, our friend Nick here figured out just such a scheme. The guard incorrectly imagined him to be in his cell when the control panel showed his door to be closed. As Monty Blair was the only prisoner in the condemned cell block in the next corridor, it was a simple matter for Nick to get to Blair's cell without being detected. Come, sir, he's got a gun. Yeah. He's the last of my arsenal. And I won't mind using it on you. Blair got the knife when I was tipped off. He was going to squeal to inspect the matches. How do you think you're going to get out of here, Nick? Lesson number one, Drummond. Tie up your pal and make it a good job. Over here, Denny. Why, well, yanking that rope when it comes to us, I'll kill both of you. No, uh, please, sir. I'm not so tight. Come on, hurry up, Drummond. If I tie you up, I'll call for the guard. From there on, it'll be easy. I'll be out of this reform school in ten minutes. No, I feel ridiculous in this position, sir. All right, Drummond. This bedsheet will take care of you. Why not save yourself a lot of trouble, Nick? You can't get away. Here's a gold star for being so smart, Drummond. Oh. Sweet dreams, pal. <laughs> How's your head feel, Drummond? Oh, it's a trifle sore, Inspector, but <laughs> rapidly resuming its normal size. And it was a very clever knot you made in tying me up, sir? Yes, Sonny. You got free just in time to summon help. We caught Marino just as he was about to ride through the front gate. He had the guard as a hostage. Did you burn those letters you took from me in Stebbins' apartment this evening? Well, then you know it was me. It had to be, Inspector. Frankly, I'm inclined to forget the whole matter. Thanks, Drummond. That rat Stebbins was... Blackmailing my wife. Thank heavens it's all over now. I guess I did a complete job of losing my head. We have the murderer, Inspector. And that's what Denny and I were after. I don't know how to thank you, Drummond. But if I can never do anything... Well, he most certainly can, sir. What's that, Denny? He can let us out of this jail, sir. <laughs> Drummond to tell us about next week's story. <laughs>